What's up guys, Orain here. So last Thursday support video was all about securing your iPhone. Just a little bit more, I showed you some settings you can enable or disable that will help make your iPhone overall just a little bit more secure. I'm gonna go ahead and link that video in the description down below and in a card up above. You can go ahead and check that video out after you check this one out, of course. But this week, it's all about my Android people out there. I'm gonna show you some settings you can enable or disable within your Android device to make it just a little bit more secure. So without further ado, let's head to the table and get started. All right guys, so one of the first things we're gonna take a look at is actually Google Protect. So I like to just go into the settings and instead of searching for stuff, Android has a pretty good search option in the settings itself. So you could just type in Google Play Protect, select that, we're gonna select that. So with Google Play Protect, what it basically does is it's ensuring that the applications that you have stored in your phone aren't harmful in any way. There's two options that you would enable in the settings here, and that's one, scan applications with Play Protect, and that basically just scans the applications within your phone to make sure that there's no harmful applications or applications that will damage your phone in any way and then there's the improve harmful application detection and this is basically just sharing some information with google on some harmful applications that may be in your phone so they can better kind of detect them and store them you can turn the first one on definitely because it will scan your applications if you don't want to share any information with google you can always toggle the second one off it's not sharing any information but it's still protecting your device i would definitely suggest turning at least the top one of these settings on the next setting we're going to take a look at is enabling the two-step authentication or two-factor authentication on your Google accounts that are on your phone. This is important in case your account ever gets hacked. If anyone ever had your email address and your password, having that two-factor enabled will not give them access to your account because they would need that second two-factor step in order to gain access to your account. You can turn that on by going into your search options and just typing in accounts. And then account to backups, you go into accounts and you select your Google account there. And then you're gonna go into Google accounts here. So it's gonna give you a bunch of different options, but the one that we're most concerned about is gonna be the securities option. So if you go to securities across the top and you're gonna go and make sure that the two-step verification is actually turned on. So the two-step verification, like I said, once it's set up, someone can have your email address, someone can have your password, but they would need that third thing, your phone to actually gain access to your account itself. I think it's very, very important that you go into your Android phone and make sure that two-step verification is turned on on any of the Google accounts you have set up on the phone. Okay, so the next one we're gonna take a look at is your secure lock settings and it's going to ask for your password so the reason why this setting is so important is because it basically controls how your phone reacts when it's either inactive or you press a button or someone enters the wrong information too many times so if someone's trying to brute force into your phone these settings will help with that so the first one we're going to take a look at is to automatically lock the phone i have mine set for like five seconds the screen turns off the phone automatically unlocks except when it's in smart lock and i'll explain smart lock just a little bit later we're going to move on to the lock instantly when I press the power button. You can select this option as well. If you want to quickly lock your phone just by pressing the power button, you can select that option. This is one of the most important ones and that's the auto factory reset. And that's basically if someone enters the incorrect password up to 15 times then your phone will automatically power down, reset and delete all data that's in the phone and factory reset the phone itself. This is a great option because if somebody's trying to brute force into your account, you don't want to give them unlimited tries 15 tries if you know your password should definitely get you in your phone if you're unable to then it's probably not you so the phone definitely wants to protect your data and the last one i would definitely suggest enabling is the lock network and security option so what this basically does is if you ever were to lose your phone no one can turn off the bluetooth or wi-fi to get your phone offline so you can't locate your device with this setting on any network setting like a bluetooth or wi-fi Wi-Fi can't be adjusted while the phone itself is locked. If this setting is turned off, you can make adjustments by turning off the Wi-Fi, switching the Wi-Fi connection while the phone is locked, and they can take the phone offline, which would prevent that find my phone option from being an option if you were ever to lose your device. Now, like I said, I kind of just wanted to quickly go over what smart lock is. It basically gives you the ability to have your phone automatically unlock when you're in one of three scenarios, when you detect it on your body, if you're in a trust trusted place or area, or if a trusted device is connected to the phone. So this is another way for you just to bypass your lock screen. If you don't want your phone locking when you're at home, for instance, or when you're at work, or if you don't want your phone locking while it's connected to your Bluetooth device, or if it's just on your person and it detects that it's on you, your phone automatically 
unlocks. So for me, these settings are a little hit or miss. I think they are a little unsafe because if someone does grab your phone from you, your phone may detect that it's still being held by someone. It's not necessarily you and it's going to unlock automatically or if someone brings it into a trusted area that you just hop in the mark as a trusted area, your phone would automatically unlock and they have access to all your information there. Or in a scenario where someone is close to you and your Bluetooth headphones connect to your phone, your phone is now automatically unlocked because it's a trusted device. My suggestion would just be to go through, see which ones you're okay with enabling. I wouldn't enable any of them, but if you choose to, just make sure you remember that it's turned on and always take precautions when you're near or around something that automatically unlocks your phone and makes it a little bit insecure. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is some app permissions. So if you go into your applications, we're gonna hit these three little dots on top. And the first one we're gonna take a look at is Permissions Manager. And basically what this does is it gives you a list of different things that different applications can request permissions to. So you have like your body sensor here or your calendar or your call logs, your camera, etc. So you can kind of go through and it'll give you which apps are allowed and which apps are denied. And what you can do is kind of do a self audit and make sure that any applications that you don't want access to a certain thing on your phone. Like for instance, who has access to my phone app? Basically all these applications have access to the phone app. If I didn't want a certain application to have access to the phone app, I would go in and deny that application that access. Bear in mind that some of these applications actually don't need full access in order to work properly. They just request it in case they need to interact with that application at a later time. It's easier for developers just to request full permission versus no permission or limited permissions altogether. So this just gives you a way for you to kind of audit the permissions that the applications have on the phone that you've downloaded into your device. The other app related permission thing we're going to take a look at is special access. And special access is basically, again, another list of access points that applications would either have access to or denied access to. So for instance, your notification access, the majority of the applications you have are going to have push notifications. So they're going to have access to that. But something like your do not disturb permissions, this will give you the applications that are allowed to bypass your do not disturb. And then you can kind of go in and make the adjustment there. And it'll give the application the ability to turn on and off my do not disturb. I'm going to deny that for now. But Again, this is just another audit place you can go into to make sure that the applications you're downloading don't have full access to your phone. Unfeathered access is never a good thing. And some of these applications, again, don't need the access that they are granted when they're initially downloaded. This is another way for you to go in and kind of secure your phone and shore down the applications that need access, have access, and the ones that don't, don't. So the next setting we're going to take a look at is biometrics and security. And when you're in the setting, you're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're going to the other security settings, which is where all the good stuff is. And like I said, you're going to find a lot of cool security settings in this particular option. So first you have your credential manager here. You can clear all the credentials that are stored in your phone. If you don't want your phone auto populating passwords or something like that, when you go to a website or an application, this is where you would go to clear those particular credentials. But you also have your trusted agents here as well. And what trusted agents are is what I was talking about previously, a basically an application or a thing that can bypass your phone's security lock. And you can kind of see which trusted agents your phone may have a lot more than mine, but you can kind of turn them off or turn them on if you wanted a certain application or a certain device to have full authority to unlock or lock or just control your phone while it's in a locked state, you would go into this trusted agent section. Another Another option that I hope you would enable is the strong protection option. And this basically just gives your phone the ability to make sure you're putting a strong enough password or pin or pattern on it. Some of us just have the face unlock and it's not the most secured option. Sometimes it's the fastest option, but your fingerprint or a pin or a pattern is probably a lot more stronger. With this option enabled, it gives your phone the extra ability to request that you enter in that pin or pattern whenever your phone is fully reset. So if your phone powers down, powers back up, the fingerprint scanner on the phone itself won't work for me until I enter in the pin number that I placed in as a secondary stronger option to get into the phone. And the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be called device admin apps. And you also want to check this list. Again, it's just checking to make sure the applications don't have administrative access on your phone. That's never a good thing. You want to make sure only the applications you want to have administrative access have administrative access 
access because with administrative access, they have access to all your pictures, all your texts, all your emails, basically anything on the phone itself. Unfeathered access, again, is never a good thing. This list may be a lot longer on your device. So you wanna go through and audit any of the applications that you don't wanna have admin access to your device in this section and just kind of tick off and on as needed. Now, a couple of bonus things I would just wanna point out is if you have a phone that has the ability to have an SD card, Android has the ability to encrypt that SD card or decrypt that SD card. So you would just basically type in encrypt or decrypt SD card. You go into that option and it's going to encrypt the data on that SD card itself. So if someone was able to gain access to your phone, remove the SD card, they wouldn't be able to just plug it into another device and gain access to the information that's stored on that card. It's another way of securing your data. And if you go into device care, you hit those three little buttons on top and you hit the advanced option. You wanna go in and make sure your auto reset is turned on and you can then set it to reset on a certain date or time. You wanna make sure your phone Phone is resetting every now and then. It does wonders for the performance of your device itself, but it also helps with making sure that everything is cleared out and all the security settings are updated. All right guys, so I hope those settings help you secure your Android phone just a little bit better. If you have some settings that I didn't share in this video that you think would help, go ahead and share those in the description down below the video. And also while you're down there, you can share any thoughts, questions, or opinions, I might regret that one, that you have in the comment section down below as well and while you're down there why not hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel with that bell for notifications so you don't miss when release some cool helpful content like this one and also go ahead and tap on that like button because it definitely definitely helps out the channel a lot but until next time i'm going to go ahead and link that support video for the security settings on the iphone here as well and this is something that youtube believes you'd enjoy watching guys thank you so much again for checking out the video and as always stay safe and peace out